A major policy change is making 2024 a pivotal year in automotive safety. By the end of the year, the United States might have a new regulation that requires anti-drunk driving tech in every new car. Drivers of the future may have their breath analyzed for alcohol before their car will even start. Cameras will analyze their behavior for signs of drunkenness. And even the gear shifter might sniff out someone who's had a bit too much to drink. Cars of the future might wipe out drunk driving as we know it. But what will it take to get there from where we are today? In 2021, the U.S. Congress passed legislation that directed the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, to mandate a driving technology that could make progress in reducing the over 10,000 road deaths that happen in alcohol-related crashes every year in the U.S. The law requires a new safety standard by November 2024, if the technology is ready. So, in a year that's already full of hotly debated topics, we've also added anti-drunk driving technology to the mix. The existing tech comes in various forms. Ignition interlock devices, or IIDs, require the driver to essentially pass a breathalyzer test before the car starts. If the device detects a blood alcohol concentration above the legal limit, the engine won't turn on. It's like your car saying, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Another major development in anti-drunk driving tech is the Driver Alcohol Detection System for Safety, or DADS for short. There are two main methods that a DADS program uses to sense if a driver is impaired. First, there are breath-based IIDs like we've already covered. But the other method DADS systems use is based on touch. In this ingenious approach, drivers simply press their fingertips onto sensors located in the car's gear shift. These nifty sensors then employ infrared light to scan the surface of the skin, effectively gauging the driver's blood alcohol concentration level. This touch-based wizardry isn't just looking for alcohol on the surface of your skin. It peers into capillaries to suss out how much alcohol the driver has had. The infrared light penetrates deep into skin tissue, and a portion of it bounces back. This reflected light carries information about the chemical composition of the blood in those capillaries, including the concentration of alcohol. And here's the clever part. There are two specific wavelengths that act as the alcohol signal. The touch-based system doesn't bother with the whole light spectrum. It's selective and only bothers with wavelengths associated with alcohol. And you don't have to worry about delays. This system isn't wasting time. It can take multiple readings in less than a second. DADS has been partnering with Snyder Trucking to test the system with commercial truck drivers. Results so far are promising, but it is still only in testing. And testing mode has sadly been the recurring story for anti-drunk driving tech. It's never really been ready for mass adoption. Nissan devised a multi-step alcohol detection system in a concept car way back in 2007, and this is probably the first time you've ever heard of it. That shows how very unsuccessful it was. And the NHTSA, despite their mandate to figure out a drunk driving solution in 2024, admits that they're not aware of any car-based blood alcohol level detection tech that's currently ready for mass production and could support a legal requirement for millions of new vehicles to have the tech. But there are plenty of companies trying to get there. One company is called Magna, and they're working on a comprehensive anti-drunk driving system called SenseAir. SenseAir is taking an all-of-the-above approach, combining blood alcohol technology with cameras and sensors. First, there's their breathalyzer tech. During the 10 to 15 seconds it takes a driver to enter the car, sit down, and start the vehicle, their normal breathing directs enough air toward the steering wheel for a little device to collect a sample and scan for any alcohol. On top of that, a camera verifies that the breath is coming from the driver and not a potentially sober passenger blowing toward the steering column. The system also notes the background levels of air, so it could potentially account for alcohol-heavy breath coming from passengers, or something innocent like spilled hand sanitizer. 
If alcohol is detected at levels nearing the legal limit, the system then prompts the driver to look directly at the driver monitoring camera, which then scans for nystagmus, the medical term for the involuntary jerking of the eyes that is what cops are looking for when they ask you to follow movement of a pen or finger during a sobriety stop. Now, of course, no technology is perfect. Critics argue that these systems might inconvenience responsible drinkers, turning even one beer at a friend's house into a situation with a car that won't start. Then there's the problem of false positives in cases where the driver wasn't drinking at all. With billions of driving hours performed collectively every day, even an amazing 0.1% false positive rate would mean millions of wrongly interrupted driving sessions. That's why the NHTSA is thinking they'll need a phased approach, starting with detection systems that target blood alcohol levels that are nearly double the amount of the legal limit. That level of drunkenness makes it much easier for technology to find consistently. The hope is that this approach would target the most egregious, most severely impaired drunk drivers with nearly foolproof accuracy. And a study from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in the U.S. showed that alcohol detection systems that stop people from drunk driving could save more than 9,000 lives a year. And there's precedent for laws requiring new life-saving tech in cars. The most recent example is rear-view cameras. In the past few years, the U.S. and Canada have made rear-view cameras required in all new cars. A 2016 study in the U.S. found that cameras reduce accidents involving cars backing up by 16%, and drivers aged over 70 benefited the most from the use of the cameras. In fact, rear-view cameras reduce back-over crashes in older drivers by 40%, so it makes sense that regulators would see the successes from rear-view camera laws and aggressively try to do even better with anti-drunk driving tech. With drunk driving accidents on the rise, the interest in this tech will increase too. Ultimately, the real solution may be to just completely take driving out of the hands of humans and let AI take the wheel. But until that tech is 99.9% .9 foolproof, we're probably going to see the rise of anti-drunk driving tech in our cars. And although there are bound to be some inconveniences, Society will probably deem them a small price to pay if it means preventing accidents, injuries, and deaths caused by drunk driving. Despite years of false starts, it looks like political forces and public opinion are finally going to push anti-drunk driving tech forward. In the very near future, we may see drunk driving become nearly extinct. That's something to be hopeful about.